Today, no chemistry, but chemist i I'm sure you've heard of another YouTuber called That Chemist, or Joey, or now he goes by his legal name, Josiah. Let's start with the beginning and some important context. Joey and I met online more than two years ago, when he and I only had a few thousand subscribers. He reached out to me and wanted to create a Discord group with other chemistry YouTubers, which he did. At the time, I had just finished my bachelor's degree in chemistry, while he was finishing up his PhD in chemistry. So him being about four years older and more experienced in the field than me was very helpful, and he gladly shared his thoughts and skills with me. We talked a lot and quickly became good friends, him even saying at one point, I talk to you more than with my wife. I appreciated his friendship and I enjoyed talking with him. This normal situation persisted for a good while, but the months leading up to February 2024, it went slightly downhill and then crashed. First, in these months, Joey was generally less talkative, as he was busy doing other things and he found some new friends in real life. However, these new friends were also people who liked using a lot of different substances. Now, I don't have a problem with drug use, I do have a problem with abuse, and these people obviously sat on the line of abuse. I did also tell him directly something along the lines of that it is not the best idea to completely surround yourself with a group of friends who are all deeply into drugs and pull you inside, because drugs can ruin you especially if you do so many and in quick succession. But at that point, he had already been using stuff, and he was already influenced with the idea that it enlightens you. I'm sure for some people it is helpful, therapeutically, not abusively. Unsurprisingly to me, this situation escalated around February 2024, where Joey allegedly took three times the normal dose of LSD while also using ADHD meds or at least some combination. This is obviously not a wise decision, and this was the moment his brain was lowered into the frying pan. The combination sent him into psychosis, but perhaps just the LSD could as well, which of course made him completely irrational. After some altercations, he was taken to the hospital and treated. Afterward, he was almost completely off the internet for many weeks, and only occasionally sent a short message, while gradually returning over the next months. Now, as you can imagine, such a situation can potentially change your brain chemistry forever, to the point where you'd need constant medication or are just permanently different. This was unfortunately also the case with him. He recovered slowly, but his personality permanently changed in a negative way. Now, it isn't really too relevant how exactly at this point, since he wasn't being rude or malicious. After I assume he came off antipsychotic medication in the past months, it seems it hasn't helped this situation at all, as his behavior started to become more concerning, as in obsessive, suddenly religious, delusion of grandeur, acting enlightened and better than everyone, etc. Now remember, this was after he, one, tried to demand chemical analysis from all YouTuber chemists, as if we are some rich research labs, and two, after his employees complained about poor working conditions, abuse and non-payment. So you know, things in the sphere weren't all that cute already, and it got even worse. Leaving that aside, we now have context to the situation that happened recently and why it might have happened. So, Joey has helped me numerous times with synthesis plans for my videos, and we discussed their viability, etc. This was the same for this video about fluorinated apathogens, which I proposed and discussed with him multiple times in the weeks following up to its upload. A few days after I uploaded that video, without contacting me or ever letting me know his concerns specifically, he decided to go onto LinkedIn and message my dad as well as one of my dad's employees. Because as he states, he gave an untested drug to people to ingest without doing any prior analysis, which is already false. I gave part of this material to a friend, as I was asked before by my friend. He hasn't ingested it, he is not a random guy off the street, and fully aware of the risks. It would not be for the video, as that would be too late. And I also told him to wait for analysis. Now everyone can have their opinion about this specifically, I can see their validity, but for this situation, it doesn't really matter legally. The material is legal, it is also legal to give it to a friend, and it is even legal to sell it. Note that near identical substances are not toxic, so the chance is pretty much zero that this one would be. Anyhow, why would he message my dad, who has nothing to do with my work? That's so weird, he can just message me directly. Mind you, I am 25 years old, not 12. Also, what I think is important to notice is the fact that Joey knows me well personally, and I also told him in detail about the situation with my parents, who are already going through it, to say the least. So he decided to message my already exhausted dad to create a drama in my family or something? Like, what was the goal? Because my dad doesn't hold that kind of influence over my content. 
If he had stated his concerns to me normally, like a friend does, I would have probably changed my mind as I valued his input. Not anymore though. Now I also got some signals that he might have reported me to the police. I never got real confirmation of that and neither have I been in contact with law enforcement. However, that would also be really weird considering I live in the Netherlands, he lives in Canada and he doesn't know Dutch law. I do know Dutch law. It is legal. I don't run some secret operation. Everything is literally on YouTube. My neighbors know, the deliverers know because they just walk straight into my lap to put a package. And one of my neighbors is even active in sort of a citizen watch community with law enforcement to look out for illegal activities. She knows. I know the way the police works in my country. They are not stupid. And they won't randomly raid someone just because you reported them. That would be a waste of resources. <coughs> America. Still, it is quite rude and escalatory if he did this. Anyhow, after this, I explained the situation to all the other chemtubers in the Discord that we have, who all thought it was really weird of him to do that. A few days later, and Joey decided to give me one week to vacate from his Discord. Obviously, I was already pissed with the situation, as he has not said a single thing to me to explain himself and how he comes with this. It was clearly his decision. You can pretend to have a mod vote, but can you really vote in China? No. So I just told him off. After which he immediately banned me from his Discord, as expected. Look where that got us. However, since he also owns the Chemtuber Discord, he decided to one-sidedly ban me from there too. Stating that, I have chosen to ban Sam, that's me, after his repeated immature behavior. If you have any issues with this, you are able to leave at will. And so they did, and we made a new Discord group without him. This just feels like high school. He again overstepped, and he doesn't decide a relation of one creator to another. Nobody truly owns that Discord, and thankfully everyone agreed with me. After this, we had our new Discord and discussed the situation, and I got a little bit more info from others here and there, but still no direct contact with Joey since he blocked me. So I continued work for my next video, titled Making Thiophosgene, which I uploaded normally, and it contained a roast of Joey's behavior of about two or three lines. Without context, this roast is difficult to understand and seems more like a joke, but it obviously struck a nerve with him, because after that, he decided to illegally copyright claim my two latest videos, causing them to be taken down. He seems to be under the impression, which I hope is just pretending, that he has any legal basis, which is just not the case. What I did in both those videos is show a self-drawn reaction scheme of a reaction he has researched in the past, which is public in his paper, of which ACS owns the copyright. Obviously, you don't have the copyright over things you publish, especially not a reaction that doesn't use any of the paper's direct content. Imagine how science YouTube would just fall apart if you can't even mention something that might be vaguely present in a paper. Mm. Normal researchers are often very happy to see their work being mentioned, let alone used practically, as I have heard from multiple researchers directly when I use their paper. By the way, I didn't even use Joey's paper or synthesis. I only mentioned the general reaction, without using any of his material. So I think it is obvious to anyone, hopefully especially if you have a PhD and you knowingly sign away your copyright when you publish, that it has no legal basis, which makes it copyright abuse or fraud. He might even be violating the agreement of publication he made with the journal, so I made sure to email them and his university to notify them of the fact that he is falsely abusing their copyright on his own behalf. Recently, Joey also decided to turn off his AdSense for some interesting moral and religious reason, as can also be seen on his channel. He also got denied for a job at Reaxis before I published that first video, which might have sent him into some spiral, but it seems Reaxis made the right decision. He is now jobless, without income, trying to legally fight someone that can outspend him. It doesn't seem so logical. So that is where it's at. I emailed Joey and he gave me some dumb response, so we will see. If the claim is upheld, I will be suing him, which I will win, so see you in court.